Hello guys, my name is Piotr Katsis and today we're going to talk about concurrency conflicts and how uh, we can handle them. Now let's see what I mean. Let's imagine that your application grows and you have multiple requests around at the same time that try to edit a record in your database. And let's say that uh, two of these uh, requests or maybe more uh, try to edit uh, something and uh, when you try to retrieve the data from the database in order to edit them they retrieve the same record but uh, then one request uh, goes and changes that record then you don't want the other request to edit as well you want to fail now let's see what i mean by an example it does not showcase an example of a lot of users but uh, in some scenarios like this one even two users are enough to make a problem so let's imagine we have uh, some kind of banking system and uh, we have an account that and two people have access to that account uh, Matt and Electra. Matt uh, will make a request for a request to withdraw 100 uh, units. That account has 100 units in there. So our application will go to the database, will retrieve uh, that account. It will see if it has 100 units, and since it has, it will update uh, the balance to zero and will go to save it to the database. Now, before it saves it to the database. Electra makes another request to withdraw 50 units. Now our application will take back that record with the 100 units. It will check if it has that amount and since it has, it will update it to 50. And then uh, we'll go and save it back to the database. So already we withdraw 150 units from an account that had 100. And maybe that request goes and saves first and makes the account zero and then that request comes and makes the account 50. So we had an account with 100 units, we withdraw 150 units and we have 50 units still. So let's see that in action in our application. I have a simple uh, accounts uh, API and in my domain I have a base entity which has an, a GUID ID and an account which inherits from the entity, it has a balance and a public void withdraw method which checks if uh, the amount is bigger than the balance and if it is it throws a new invalid operation exception with the message in sufficient funds uh, else it uh, subtracts the withdrawable amount from the balance. Now to my controller I have uh, one controller for creating an account, I have one for getting back an account so we can see it and I have uh, two endpoints, one for withdrawing and one for withdrawing with some uh, fake delay of half a second so we can uh, make two requests. So let's debug that and see what happens. So I'll open uh, Postman and I will create a new account with a balance of 100. Okay, we have our account, let's try to get it. And we get it and then let's try to withdraw with delay 100 uh, units and then uh, withdraw without delay 50 units so send and send we have 200 ok so we withdraw 50 dollars and then we have 200 ok we withdraw 100 dollars so we withdraw 150 units from an account that had 100 units now that's obviously bad and let's see how we can fix it we need to apply some kind of versioning to our that to our rows in a database. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say that now that the, this account in the database, instead of uh, the amount of 100, has a version of let's say A. Now that request comes in, it goes to the database, it retrieves uh, the record, it makes the amount uh, zero and uh, that request uh, also comes in it goes to the database, it retrieves uh, the account, makes the uh, amount 50 and now one of these goes to try and save the database let's say it's that one it uh, will go, it uh, will change uh, the account from 100 to 50 and it will also change the version, so the version will be B now when that the request tries to save the zero, the amount zero. Uh, since uh, when we retrieved uh, that record from the database, the version was A. Now it will see that the version has changed to B. 
So it won't save you the database, it will fail and as a result that whole request will fail. So Matt wouldn't be able to withdraw $100, 100 units, it would have to try again. But now the uh, account will have a balance of 50, so will not be able to withdraw 100 units. Let's see how to implement that in our code. Well, in that example, I'm using a SQL Server and eventually we will make in this video a generic solution that works, that works with every database but the SQL Server as well some other database providers have their own implementations about that and if we were to use SQL Server, all I was needed to do is go back to my entity and add a new property called version and that will be and byte array and in my configuration since I use entity framework I will go to my account configuration and uh, now all I needed to say is builder.property and that version property I need it to be arrow version so that uh, will check it's time we try to save the database if uh, that thing that we try to save has the same version as the one that is in the database but that's specific to SQL Server so let's see a more generic solution I will go to my account and um, I could still use a byte or anything but for simplicity let's use a GUID I will call that version and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my application DB context and I will override uh, the save changes async method. Okay, now let's return in the end the result of uh, the base save change async method. So await base dot save changes async and let's pass the cancellation token. And now I want to take all the entries that I attract by entity framework. So I'm going to say var entries equals with change tracker dot entries and I want uh, the entries of type entity. And now let's limit the to the ones that are about to be added or modified. So I will say x dot state is entity state added or entity state modified now I'll iterate through these entries so I'm going to say for each uh, entry in entries so entry and I'm going um, to update the version so entry dot entity dot version equals with GUID dot new GUID Finally, I go to my account uh, configuration and uh, I'm going to say that this version property, so builder.property version is concurrency token. So now every time we try to save um, a record in the database, uh, it uh, will check if uh, the version is different and if it is, it will fail. So let me really fast add the migration and update my database. Okay, now it's done. Now let's go to our database and um, remove that row so we can create a new account. Okay, let's debug that and let's open Postman again. So I'm going again to create a new account with a balance of 100. And we have that uh, account. We will go to check it again. It's 100. Okay, let's try to withdraw 100 and then 50 so we'll try to withdraw 100 and then 50 now that 50 request that uh, handled first uh, we get back to 100 okay and the amount is 50 but in that one we get an error and we get a, a db update concurrency exception the, and that's the exception message that we get when we try to update uh, something with a different version so now if we go back uh, to try to get uh, the account information, we'll see that the balance is 50. So that was it about uh, handling concurrency conflicts with Entity Framework Core. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a nice one.